our unit today is uh, support children's physical care routine, and this is uh, unit three. So uh, we all have uh, our our unit paper in front of us. Yes. Yeah. So now we all work in a nursery and working in a nursery will require you to do certain activities with the children. For example, you need to change nappies sometimes if they are really bit like young. You can even uh, do toilet training. You you teach them how to do washing, bath in time. You, you train them on how to do skin care, how to do hair care, how to do many certain activities. So let us start first with, um, with changing nappies. So if we go to the question here, it's explain the role of early years practitioner during changing nappies. So what's your role as a practitioner in a nursery? Can anyone tell me? What would I you do? Yes. Yeah, to clean the area, make sure everything is clean and sanitizer, make the kids uh, comfortable and uh, make everything in your hand before you start clean, uh, changing the nappy. Excellent, that's very good. Very okay. important point is to keep everything hygienic and clean. clean. Any other things you can think of when you change nappies? First, we have to wash our hand as Excellent. we change our nappy. Mm -hmm. Take the baby nappy. That's a very good point. You need okay. to wash your hands. Any other things you can think of? And also to make sure that the safety of the child when I'm changing it is safe, they will not fell over or something to hurt them. That's, per that's perfect. So you need really secure area where you change the nappies. Any and other uh, thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, put the on kids. gloves and the uh, apron. Very good, Before. excellent. You yeah. always yeah. need to protect yourself and protect the baby, just in case you have any. Yeah. So can you put yourself on mute if you have this uh, noise in the background? So what we need to do, changing nappies is essential in order to prevent babies and toddlers from developing skin infection. So if we don't change the nappy for a baby, let us say they uh, we, we leave them for longer than one, two hours extra than we should, then they will have a skin infection. Their skin will go red, uh, they, they might go start itching. So the best thing we do is we need to change uh, the, the nappies on time to avoid infection. And this has to, be, uh, has to be done in hygienic way. So what we need to do is we need to avoid spreading bacteria. So uh, we have Soraya joining. So to avoid spreading bacteria, we need everything to be hygienic. So how do we do that? We, as uh, your colleague said, we need to uh, wear apron and gloves. Uh, these should be always worn uh, when we change in nappies. Also, nappies should be always placed in designated bin. So when we finish with the, with the nappy, we wrap it and we put it in a, a specific bin. And that we don't just leave it hanging around because this is not hygienic. So we need specific or designated bin for this. And we need to wash our hands before and after, as one of your colleagues said as well. And uh, we need to record the time of changing and the name and any reaction of the skin rash or something like that. Excellent, that's very good because every child will have their own uh, folder so we can write if we notice any rash or anything on their skin then we can maybe use creams 
So we need to record everything we, we have noticed unusual. And also we record the timing that we change the nappy. So let us say I left at uh, five o'clock, um, not five o'clock, Okay, they finish anyway. Let us say I left in the middle of the day. I was working there, but left in the middle of the day because I had something to do in the hospital or a doctor appointment or anything. Then my colleague will come. She doesn't need to, uh, she needs to know what happened. So we always ne need to make sure that we let people know when the baby is being changed and if he needs any changes at the moment as well. That's a very good point. And uh, uh, sorry, we have another person joined in. Let me just, okay. Yeah, so this is about changing nappies. Obviously, there are some steps, but this is you don't need to put everything in the uh, just some of the information which is related to because it says here explain the role like your role or your job how to do the nap changing so what we explain this is good but we can add a little bit more to say we can use we should use uh, a clean area to make these cha um, to change the nappies hygienic place uh, and also a uh, clean mat where we put the baby. Uh, everything uh, needs to be washed, our hands before and after. Uh, we talk to the uh, child while we doing uh, the, the changing uh, for them. So they don't feel like scared. So you need just to maybe say something nice, smile to the baby while you're changing so they don't feel scared. Wash your hands, as we said before and after. Put your disposable uh, gloves and apron, and then get rid of the gloves uh, when you finish with the nappy changing. Also, the underwear it might be getting wet. We need to change it uh, for the baby. Uh, if if they need uh, and uh, also uh, clean the genital area if. If we if needs a cleaning, then we use uh, some wipes and we uh, or uh, cottons so we can clean it and uh, dry it because you can't just leave it wet and then dry it and uh, put the nappy on, give him a new underwear and then wash our hands. Is this clear so far? Yes. Excellent. So now, what about the toilet training? Can you think about what's your job when in terms of toilet training? We can well, use potty. So say it again. We can use potty potty. Yes, very good. So we need a clean uh, a clean uh, potty to to start training them. Make sure that before we start, we we'll show the child like storybook about put it rain, or to show him video is safe and it's fine, and to make him feel calm and show him how the process goes with a dolly or with something. Yeah, that's that's a very good idea. So if you put the 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 potty, how are you going to convince him to sit? You just Pretend that you're sitting on it or just show him that it's OK to use it. Uh, make sure it's clean always. And uh, also, uh, it, like it requires skills uh, for 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 the baby to learn how to use it. So. Making sure to stay calm. Yes, very good. Then we, we... It, it needs patience. That's that's very yeah. good point. Yes. Yeah. We expect the child the uh, uh, any accident happened. Very good. It could happen like uh, they could uh, we themselves while we're training them is fine. Just take it normal and don't make the baby scared. Just be patient, laugh yeah. about it and clean it with uh, clean it and uh, don't make it a big uh, issue and wait until the, the baby is ready. Uh, the, not a baby, the child uh, because they are not 
they yeah. are not babies anymore, but they need to feel ready to to do uh, to to sit on the uh, pot uh, potty. Otherwise, uh, um, they might sit there and like they will be just feeling they don't need to sit. Well, if they are physically ready, uh, their bladder is is full and they need to do it, then they will sit on it and start learning how to use it. Oh, oh, so yeah. I, yeah, so our role, what, what is our role in this sense? Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Akira yes. is still waiting. I tried to forward for her the email, but she cannot get through. Could you please send her the invitation? I tried to forward for her, but it doesn't, it doesn't go through. Akila Hamisi. Akila. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so just sorry. give me one second. I'm just going to stop sharing because uh, I need to put uh, her email. Okay. Do you know her email? Uh. Guys, do you know Akila's email? Sorry, Lena, I'm calling you from the laptop. Maybe it comes nicer. Can you accept me? It's good for me. It's better yeah, sure. than before. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So, do you know, guys, uh, Akila's email? Uh, yeah, just a second. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, I wrote it because I tried to send her. Then, yeah, Akila Hamisi, yeah, or, or her name. So, it's AK. No, the email. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Akila Hamisi is um, A K I L A K I H E M H E M M I C current I see at yahoo.france at yahoo.com no no that yahoo uh, dot france fr dot france yeah just fr okay i send it to her so now let us go back to sharing. And uh, where we are. OK, so now we were talking about. Uh, about toilet training. So what's the. Uh, so what's your job as a, a child practitioner? What would you do? So the role of us is to show the child where the potty or the toilet is. Then uh, we leave the child to use it independently. If the children are constantly reminded to go, they may not uh, pick up uh, pick up on the sign that they need to go. So you don't keep pushing them. You, you, you don't constantly remind them. You just leave it. Uh, whenever you feel like this kid needs uh, to to have the, the the potty, then you bring it for him. You don't keep constantly reminding him. And also, uh, could accident could happen? Could happen, like your colleague said. And. Uh, we should just deal with it normally. We should just clean it. We should be patient with the with the kids because they are learning. They are. We don't take things. Uh, we don't rush them to do it. We just give them the time. Leave them to do it independently. And uh, also, 
uh, what else here they have? So the first day we you need to talk uh, about how the child is coping. You talk to their uh, parents, maybe because they need at home to do the same thing. They need to train him on to use the potty as well. So you you keep uh, good communication with the parents to tell them about their about their child progress, and they tell you until their child can start using the the potty by themselves. So our role will be. So for me, if I want to answer this question when it says toilet training, I will be my role is uh, to. Okay, I have. I think I have her now joined in. No, that's Masuda. So if I'm going to answer the question, I would be saying uh, for toilet training, uh, my job is to be patient with the with the kid. Also, uh, I need to uh, to show them how to use it. Give them the time they can uh, use it independently. Don't keep reminding them about using it uh, every time, all the time. From time to time, whenever you feel you think that the, the child might uh, need it, then you remind him of it. Also, uh, for the for the potty, uh, you need to start communicating with the with the child parents because uh, they have the child using the potty at home. So you can keep communicating about his progress and uh, how he getting on or she getting on uh, with the, with using the potty. And then until the child will get there. So is this understood? Yes. 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 Yeah. Excellent. So yes. how about uh, washing and bathing time? Washing and bathing time. First, we have to put the safety first. Yes. Very good. Yes, and um, explain to the child and then talk with the parent as well um, what they like, what they don't like. Yeah, make sure that everywhere is clean before we put them into bath. Okay, for, for us as a uh, child care practitioner, what we do is uh, just make sure that the baby's face, the baby's hand are always clean. For us, we don't like if you work in an nursery, you wouldn't be giving bath to the children. So this is they do it at home. What we need to make sure that their hands are clean, their face is clean. If they use paints or if they if they eat, make sure they wash it before uh, food and after food. So this is all our job. After going to toilet as well. I, I, exactly, that's a very good point. <laughs> I didn't even highlight this. Yeah, that's very good. So uh, before eating, before the, or, or touching the food, and after eating, and also after they go to the toilet, uh, after playing outside or even inside with paints, or um, even uh, after touching animals, uh, if you go somewhere and start playing with some animals, and also uh, after they blow the nose and after uh, doing any kind of painting or playing or any activity. So our goal as a practitioner is to make sure their face and their hands are always clean. We don't give bath. This is they get it at home. So at, uh, at the nursery, we need to make sure their face and their hands are clean especially before and after eating, after they go to the toilet, after playing outdoors or even indoors when they play with paints, after touching animals and after they blow their nose. So this is everything we do as a practitioners. And uh, also, as you can see here, when when you wash the children's hands, obviously you need to wash the, uh, the water temperature. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be very cold or and it shouldn't be really hot. So it should be something uh, warm to uh, and uh, you use the soap. Make sure everything is cleaned properly. Uh, 
Miss. Yes. Yeah. Um, about the washing uh, bath time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we talk about it, so is it in the, in the, in the, in the, in a nursery or in a setting, or is it at home? Yes, exactly. It is at home. So washing when they have bath time, they have yeah. it always at home. However, exactly. in the nursery, we wash their hands and face only. Yes. Make yes. sure their hands and face are always clean, especially after eating food, uh, after going to the toilet and before eating uh, as well. So before and after eating food, after mm -hmm. going to the toilet, after playing outdoors, after they touch animals and blow their nose and after playing even indoors, if they play with paints or any other materials, needs cleaning and washing after that. And also we need to make sure uh, that we always uh, the, uh, make sure that the, the water we wash with with is always warm, not cold, not very warm or hot. Uh, otherwise, mm. it might uh, hurt their hands. Yeah. So this is only what we do. And uh, we we give some uh, cleaning with wipes. Uh, if if they were babies, we change nappies. So we don't even uh, give them a bath. We just uh, clean them and uh, dry them. But we don't give them bath. Yeah? Thank you. Ms. Okay, excellent. So now shower time and bath time. As we said, this is we just discussed it. So now, uh, so we've done this, we've done this. Now care for skin, teeth, and hair. So how would you do the care for skin? For the child's skin? How would you do it uh, for their teeth and um, for the hair? Can anyone think of uh, what would you do for children to care for their teeth, for their hair, and for their skin? We have to check their skin is not dry too much. That's very good, especially if the child has got eczema. That's really eczema. good. Eczema, yeah. It's not crack on their skin. Absolutely, that's a very good point. Sometime in the head, they have a dandruff and each is scalp. So, yes, yeah, so then when we they should are inform the parents. They, That's very good. Yeah. Hey. So they, they eat regular, regular brushing their teeth. Like. Yeah, that's a very good point. So for the teeth, we, we need to make sure they regularly brush their teeth after the food. Any other things you think of? The nails has to be like, sh you know, short, not long nails coming to the nursery or yeah, hygienic wise. Yeah, otherwise they might scratch their skin. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as a practitioner, you always have to think about the food uh, the people uh, like uh, that you provide in the nursery is it affecting the children's uh, tooth so if it affecting uh, the child teeth then there is a problem if you offering them uh, sweets if you offering them crisps if you offering all everything might affect their teeth then you should stop that. Even the drinks, if they are too sugary uh, or, or fizzy drinks, we shouldn't offer this food to their children. Any other things we can think of? Milk and water is good for the teeth. So we offer, we offer the milk and water. Yes, very good. Yeah. So water, water as well is good for skin, to keep skin uh, hydrated. Excellent. And also, if you think about it, the fruit juice, what is what it has? It has acid, lots of acid that would affect their teeth. So we better just stick to the water. Yeah. 
that's very good point. Any other things you might do? It is normally a home base uh, like care. They, they normally have to brush their teeth before uh, they go to bed and after when they wake up in the morning as well. So mm. this is mainly they do it at home. But for us, we have to take care uh, of the children. We have to make sure that the, the food is suitable. Uh, it's not sh too sugary for them. Uh, also, the drinks uh, doesn't have acidity. Otherwise, this will affect their, their teeth. Uh, and uh, also, so we provide water better than even food, food juice because this is not acidic, which is good for them. So for us as a practitioner, first of all, we need to find out from the parents what type of uh, toothpaste uh, to use, because uh, some of the children, they might have sensitive teeth or just normal teeth. Or, so for, for the parents, they would bring uh, the, these toothpaste with them, get the child to sit comfortably in a position where their hand uh, can uh, can uh, can tip back, and also uh, for children under uh, three, uh, uh, put uh, you you put you you use good toothpaste. Uh, it doesn't affect their their teeth, and also suitable for their uh, age. Age. Yeah, exactly. Age, yeah. And uh, also, can you think about other things you might do? About teeth? Yeah, you know, we need to teach them how to brush their teeth gently, not too fast, not too, uh, uh, not, uh, too strong on the teeth, because this will uh, remove the, the first layer of the enamel. So what we do, we ask them to brush it I gently. The, the gum. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, they will affect. Uh, and this will uh, remove any bacteria from the gums. And then once we finish brushing, we encourage the child to sit and uh, to, to, to spit out any excess, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, allow the children to, to have uh, a go at the brushing either before or or uh, you start or afterwards. So this is normally they do it at home. Yes. So for us, we can if the parents will like uh, normally they will bring it with them uh, with the children, then you teach the, the baby how to use it. You, you teach them how to use it slowly, how not to brush very fast or uh, very strong on the teeth, otherwise would hurt the first layer of the of the teeth uh, and make sure that they brush correctly so the bacteria will be removed from the gums and also uh, teach them how to spit out everything in the, uh, after they finish brushing uh, using mouth uh, using uh, water to clear their mouth after so for us as a practitioners we need like if I want to go in, if I'm going to answer this question, because here you need three type of, uh, of care. So first of all, uh, you need to talk about the teeth care, uh, the skin care, the hair care. So that's three types of care. So I'm going to, to put the teeth care first. Uh, we, we missed the skin care. Let us go back and do it as well. So for the, for the teeth, how you care for it? As a practitioner, first thing which is very important to us, make sure that we provide in the nursery very good food. It doesn't have high sugar, it uh, doesn't have high acidity for the children. Also, the, the, the drinks would be better to stick with water or milk rather than uh, food juice because the food juice uh, would have lots of acidity which affects uh, their uh, teeth. And uh, also we need to uh, even though this is meant to be uh, something you learn at home, 
but when the child bring their teeth uh, toothbrush and uh, the paste with them is good to train them as well so what you, you would uh, teach how to put uh, the toothpaste on the brush how to start brushing their teeth how to do it to do it gently so they don't scratch their tooth and also after they finish how to sip uh, spit it out and how to wash uh, their uh, mouth with water after they finish. So is this is this clear? Yes. 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 Step okay. by step. Yes, yes. exactly. Now, how about uh, the care, uh, the skin care? Can you think about what's our job as a practitioner in terms of uh, skin care? We need to know if uh, we have to ask the parents if they have like a skin condition, first of all, that we need to apply I while they're at the right. Very yeah. good. Yes, very good. Mm. Any other things you can think of? Yeah, we need to know which uh, which kind of cream he put if in case he got uh, eczema or as my son he got uh, eczema he's two years old uh, usually they ask me uh, from nursery uh, which kind of uh, cream he's put you can put uh, on him uh, yeah yeah sometimes he, he like he got like a rash and sometimes he's bleeding so they very um, good excellent yeah how yes. how we wash him how we clean them Absolutely. Yeah. So you always yeah. need to work uh, in a partnership with the parents mm. here because they have lots of information about the child. So uh, whenever mm. you do any kind of care for the child, you always make sure to communicate it first with the with the parents. Yeah. What they would what do they use um, for their skin? How they treat the yeah. eczema, as you said, something like this. So. So here, what, what we have in the book says caring for children's skin is important and uh, as an important uh, barrier to prevent infection. So the skin is very important for any child because uh, it is a barrier between the body and any infection they can find from the atmosphere. So uh, for us, we have to take care uh, a lot of the child skin. So we wash their faces, uh, we wash uh, their hands, make sure it's always protected with uh, from the sun. So we have sun cream on their uh, skin. Uh, and also if they have special conditions like eczema, we make sure uh, to ask the parents first and uh, to, so they can let us know what cream they use uh, and bring it with them so we can put it and uh, on the child's skin and make sure this is our responsibility to uh, remember when to put these uh, creams on the child's skin and uh, also uh, what is there so especially if the sun is strong, we definitely need uh, skin, uh, sun screen, sun protection. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Now, how about the hair? What's, as a practitioner, how, how, what is your responsibility for the child's hair? We need to check how is clean if there is any um as they said here um insect how they call it the uh, insect head lice head lice yeah head lice yes that's yeah. very good we have to make sure yeah. yes Excellent. So is it a responsibility of the practitioner to uh, to care for the hair or uh, is it a responsibility for their parents and for their nanny at home to take care of their hair? Can you think about this? It's our responsibility to check because there is older children uh, in, in the nursery. So we just do be avoided, uh, you know, for older children. So we need yeah. to check in case uh, maybe uh, parents didn't check or they didn't 
see it properly. Sometimes you can't see it. It's happened to me. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's a very good point. Uh, but if you think about it, uh, like hair care could be uh, everything. If I'm washing the hair, if I'm yeah. drying the hair, if I'm combing the hair, for us, not everything is our responsibility. Of so course. as a care setting, our responsibility relies on just maybe finding special condition on the hair, uh, like uh, uh, hair lace or uh, but this is normally when like caring for the hair, washing the hair, taking care of the hair. This is all the parents' responsibility or the child mind them. I think the parent's responsibility, the parent. but it's good to look up, to check and then inform the uh, parent what you have seen. So they will not transfer to other children. Is yes, very good. So our responsibility is just to spot these things like head lace or uh, because this is transferable could be move from one child to another child so if we notice that we have to inform the, the his parents immediately to make sure we get rid of this so this is our responsibility to inform the parents exactly to inform the parents so how would you spot this Sorry, miss. How, how would you spot it? Well, how would you know this child has got a head lace? Uh, other one doesn't. The itching comes. Tried itching. itching. Too much. Itching, itching. Yeah, and we can see some time in top of her hair. Yes. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Any other 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 signs for that? You will see it crawling on their hair. Very good, yes. Oh, I'll even that, see the empty eggs uh, yeah. as well on their hair. Oh, yeah. seriously? <laughs> you oh, don't even see thoughts. on the. Yeah. yeah, that's very good points. Even you can see on the scalp sometimes they keep uh, because it's itchy, so the child will keep uh, eating. Uh, itching until the, the the skin will will have some blood. Yeah, damage the skin. Yes, very good. Especially where the head lace has bitten the, the child. And uh, also, so you can see it, you can see the sign, uh, hmm. on, signs on the, uh, on the child. If he keep uh, like uh, each in his hair, if he keep uh playing with the scalp all the time if you can sometimes you can see the head lace moving on his on his hair or maybe you see the the eggs on the hair and also you, you might see a, a blood on the skin uh, and uh, all of this uh, are signs uh, that he's got it and uh, often uh it, this could be spreadable really fast from one child to another child. So our responsibility is to make sure we tell the parents about uh, this issue. So for us, if if I was going to answer the question where it says hair care, so for me I say uh, hair care is not uh, the uh, where is it? Hair care is not the uh, necessary responsibility to take care of the child hair washing them dry it uh, combi however our responsibility is to spot some of the uh, uh, of the things like uh, like head lace because this uh, this is really uh, bad for the children because it's really spreadable really fast and uh, we can spot it. We can spot it by uh, the itchiness uh, to the scalp. The child will be uh, the 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 insect will be moving on the child's hair. Also, you can see the eggs uh, on his hair, and uh, you might see even blood. Uh, you can spot on the scalp uh, from the itchiness. So all this uh, science uh, that tells you that this child has got uh, head lace. So then. What's our responsibility? Our responsibility is to inform the parents about this issue. Is this uh, understood? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. 
So as you can see here, there are so many ways to treat uh, the head lace. Uh, however, this is all the, the parents' responsibility. For us, our responsibility is just to inform them about the warning sign. Now, what do we have? We have meal times. So what's our responsibility when it comes to meal times? Can you think about our responsibility as a practitioner? What's your responsibility? Uh, would you just leave the children? Uh, uh, how, how, who's going to serve the food? Uh, what's your responsibility when it is food time? Is it Can food you think food about food? things? Food vision. Um, what's the thing? Dinner hall and tell them to wash your hands. Very good. Step Excellent. Proper, yeah, and tell them to sit properly, give them plates, cutlery. Yes, very good. Because I'm doing this job, Miss, right now. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just tell us about your experience. That's really good. So what do you do in when it is meal time? Mm. So make sure the food is has got lots of uh, nutrition. Yes, yeah? so we don't give them chocolate and crisps and make sure the food is healthy. It's fit for their for their age. Uh, even when we give them snacks, give them fruit rather than chocolate and sweet. So make sure the food is suitable. Also, we encourage the children to uh, to try taste to new things like we give them different type of food all the time or different uh, things to taste encourage them to taste because they normally uh, they go for the same food over and over again and it's not good for their body and also we we should encourage them uh, about what can you think about other things you encourage them drink water very good drink water we encourage them also to serve themselves so we don't yes. keep feeding one by one we encourage them to be independent to use yes. the catalogs and feed themselves that's very good we need to take under consideration the some children have uh, food prohibition and allergic to some uh, some food for example strawberries or some like something like uh, uh, diaries so we, we don't need to give them uh, any food. We, we need to use uh, the uh, meal book. Yes. The meal book who, yeah. Uh, some seating uh, mention in the meal book that some children have uh, a prohibition food, uh, doesn't uh, like uh, don't eat uh, uh, cheese or something like that. We need to use this. Very mm -hmm. good. So there are some children who have got allergies to some type of food. We have to make <laughs> sure they don't have this food on their. Uh, they have when allergy. we provide them with their beans. Yes, exactly. Very good because this will give them reaction and uh, will affect their health. Also, uh, make sure that the, the chops of the food. Uh, so the chops, we chop the food into small pieces. Why? Because uh, we don't want the children to chop on it. We need them to uh, to allow them to manage it and eat it properly. So we need to make sure that they are uh, put into smaller size uh, pieces. Mm -hmm. So what's our role as a practitioner? First of all, we monitor the children's food. We make sure that there are lots of nutrition in the food. And also, uh, we uh, even uh, when it is a snack time, make sure it's enjoyable, but also uh, healthy snacks like food, like uh, uh, some uh, which we give them in different colors or different sizes, make sure they eat it. Also, the snacks, as we said, and also as our responsibility is, first of all, we encourage them, we serve the food to them, we encourage them to taste different type of food and try to uh, 
try new tastes every time. And also uh, we teach them how to save themselves. It's very important. They need to be independent and uh, we teach them how to do that. Also, uh, we teach them how to use bowls, catilleries. It's very important how to use and uh, feed themselves. And uh, in case there is reaction, because we know that like already the parents have told us what uh, kind of reaction these children, if they have any, then we make sure don't provide them with this type of food, which give them reaction and uh, make sure they don't choke on the food. How we do that is by chopping the food into small pieces. So this is our responsibility. Is this uh, like clear enough? Or do you want us to repeat it? No, miss. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. That's very good. Thank you. Now, identify situations in which non-routine physical care is required. So if I go to 2.1, what kind of situations uh, that non routine physical care required? Can you think about any activities? They are not routine. They don't like. Child might do it, might not need it, but uh, what type of care? Can you think about any non-routine physical care required? So first of all, blowing noses. So you don't do everything. Okay, when you, when you need it. So how you teach the child, if it is called, how they do blow their noses, how to wipe their noses with the tissue after they do it. So it is Sorry, say again. So I said, it's sometimes, not every yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. Especially when it is cold, they might need it. So when the child has cold, uh, they will need their nose uh, to be wiped. And it is important to help children to learn to blow their nose, to prevent infection, uh, and uh, dispose the tissue after you finish. Teach them how to put it in the uh, in the bin and also how to wash their hands after. So, what are the situations where non-routine physical care is required? First one is blowing nose. Yeah. Second one, what is it? Is emollient cream. What is that? It's the cream which you use, for example, for the eczema. So, mm -hmm. some children they might need it. Some children, they don't. So yeah. was the care yeah. uh, required? Yeah. So your care is just to put the cream uh, on their eczema, uh, on their hands and uh, on their bodies uh, if they keep each in the skin. Make sure that skin is moisturized, not dry. So this is your, your care routine. Uh, also, not routine. It's, it's a non-routine because not for all the children, some of the children. Well, just remember the kids to go and put it by himself. To show him first time and after he can do it by himself. Yeah, it depends on the child age. Yeah. That's a very good point. Any other things you might teach the children to do? Changing nappy. Yeah, if if they or are older, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not. If they are young babies, we change it. This is our routine job. It's fine. But some of the older kids, they might still need to change nappies. Why? Can you think of anything? Uh, might uh, we might have to keep changing nappies? They have medical conditions or disabilities, as they said. Very good. So because they might have medical condition or disability, which would prevent them from going to the toilet. So we need to keep changing their nappies. So uh, while most of the children are uh, not in nappies after uh, age of three years old, 
uh, some children may have medical conditions and disabilities, therefore we need to use uh, an nappies. That's a big Any other training you might give to the child, which is non routine? We can feed them if uh, they have a, a disability as well, or medical needs. Very good. So Support them how to, to how to eat safely. Yes, very good. So for normal, we we teach them how to feed themselves. But sometimes, uh, while well, like most of the children, they can feed themselves. Some of the children, uh, they have some medical conditions. They might not be able to do them. We will be needed and we will, we will have to do the feeding. Any other activities you might uh, train the child to do? Which is non-routine? Yeah. Make sure to give them some soap or uh, how to wash properly them, uh, their hands when they come out from the toilet or after eating. OK, for this, this is routine. Yeah, uh, we have to do. But this is what we doing here is non routine. It's not usual things, but we sometimes have to do it. So changing and washing children after toilet accident, because normally the children will be either uh, potty trained or toilet trained or using nappies. So we don't want we don't need to uh, wash them. However, if they have any accident, then we have to. We can't just uh, wipe it and uh, pretend nothing happened. So the children are being toilet trained. Sometimes afterwards, adults may need uh, to change and wash them. If they have uh, wet or uh, soiled themselves. So if they have wet themselves, then we have to wash them. So to answer this question, it says identify situations where non-routine physical care is required. So non-routine, the routine ones we said about lots of uh, care we provide. We talk about the same things that we said in the, in um, here, Miss. Or we need to. Yes, uh, this talk is the other one. It says, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Here, if you read this, it says situations in which non-routine physical care is required. So what is the situations where non-routine physical activities is yes, required? So we'll do. Can we talk something about something you don't do it every day? Yeah. Can we can we, can we talk about the same thing like blowing nose, uh, nappy Yeah, this is the one. Can we can we they do that? Uh, in our for yeah, assignment. So if, talk. Yeah, this is for the assignment. So for, for the yeah. assignment, it says I can define situations in in which non-routine physical care is required. So the routine one is when you provide the food for them, uh, when you train them to use the toilet or the potty. These are routine. However, non-routine one. Uh, some of the uh, of the children might need it. Not everyone, not all the time. So non-routine one. What are they? This is the one. First of all, these are uh, the points, which is blowing noses. And uh, this uh, one the child have called, they will need uh, their nose to be wiped. It is important to help children to learn to blow their nose properly. To prevent the infection, you need to uh, throw this uh, tissue in the bin and make sure they wash their hand. Also, another <clears throat> train you might give it not all the time, sometimes, which is uh, emollient cream. Uh, some of the children who have eczema may need adults to put uh, emollient cream on their hands uh, and their body. So you don't do it all the time, just you do it for some of the children. Also changing nubbies if they are all children. So normally you do it only for the babies, but sometimes the children uh, might have uh, disabilities or medical condition. Uh, which uh, force the parents to use nappies for them. So then you have to still uh, change the nappies and maybe uh, give additional wash uh, if it is required. 
also feeding. We said uh, in terms of food, we said we just serve them with the food. We uh, we give them bowls and cutleries. We train them how to use it and we leave them to eat it independently. However, here we have non-routine ones feeding, uh, which is sometimes you need to feed the baby if uh, the kids if they have some medical condition and mm. they can't feed themselves. They need to be fed by adults. Last one, uh, which is sometimes you need to do it, uh, changing and washing children after toilet accident, because accident doesn't happen every, every day. So sometimes they have an accident <coughs> and you need to uh, change their clothes, give them a, a quick wash, uh, make sure everything is clean and hygienic, uh, then uh, put on them a new clothes. So this is a non-routine job as well, because you don't do every day. It's sometimes when the child have got any accident. So is this understood how to answer yes, this please. question? Yeah. Perfect. Now, if I go to the next one, it okay, says mama. describe mama. the benefit of working in partnership with a parents carer in relation to individual physical care routine. So what's the benefit of you working with the pair, uh, close with the parents or with the carers of the children? Can you think about benefits you can get? Uh, so this is 1.3, uh, let us go to 1.3. Okay, so what's the benefit you gained if if you work close with the uh, child parents or the child care carer? Is it important to work with the parents or is it not important? Of course it is. Of course, uh, very important. Okay. Uh, Can you yes, for very the child safety for the child health for. Um, yeah. Very good. So it is extremely important. Why? Because from the parents, we got lots of information about each child. child. Yeah. yeah. So we know their preference, we know their allergies, we know uh, how to deal with certain situations uh, if they need extra support uh, according to their medical uh, condition or uh, any disability they might have. So all the information we will get from the parents. So uh, working uh, with parents is very important. Uh, so let us start from here. So for, it is essential for earlier setting to work closely with the parents to ensure that individual child uh, children's uh, care needs are met. So make sure that the child's needs are always met is by working closely with his parents or her parents. Uh, this is uh, required of EYEs uh, normally uh, to be responsible for a key person. So for us, uh, like we talk to the uh, father or mother, pers a person who always come and collect this child because this is a key person for the child. So we need to take all the information from this person. So one of these information is allergies. So here we put allergies. What, what would you gain if you work closely with the parents in terms of allergies? So if the child has got sensitive skin or a, a condition, medical condition in their skin, so the uh, working or talking to the parents is very important uh, because we need to know what kind of soap we would use, uh, was the temperature of the water they we should use, maybe they can't use warm water, always just warm or cold water, or it depends on what they need us to do. Also, they will uh, tell us which cream we should use after the nappies. Do they need to have a, a, a wash all the time or we can just use uh, wipes 
So we need to take all this information uh, from the child parents. So if the child has got any allergic reaction to personal uh, personal uh, care products, then we mustn't not use these type of products uh, or, or food. It depends on. Uh, so always listen uh, to the parents and ask accordingly when they share the information. Also, it's very important in terms of child preference. So some parents will have a uh, preference uh, by the type of the products they use. So we can't just put any cream on the child's skin or we can't use uh, any uh, toothpaste for the child or we can't they have certain products, so we know their preference, and what they like us to do, uh, and then we just follow it. They may use certain product which we don't use in the nursery. Also, the uh, cultural and religious reason. So, for example, uh, when we work close with the with the kids' parents, they might tell us that this child cannot eat a certain type of meat or cannot meet uh, eat meat at all he's vegetarian or depends on their religion uh, practice so we need to go close uh, and get all the information from the parents it's very important so now if i was going to answer this question where it says describe a uh, benefit of working in partnership with parents and carers in relation to individual physical care routine so what is the answer? Taking our precautions to avoid any risk. Yes, exactly. So we need to avoid any risk uh, related to the children. So if we work closely with them, we will find out a lot of information which we can use uh, to provide better care for the child. So it is essential for early child care practitioner or a setting uh, to work closely with the parents. And uh, this require normally uh, we we count a person who a key person for this child and take all the information from this key person. Uh, these uh, information such as allergies is very important to uh, to know if the child has got any allergies to certain type of food or, or if they got any uh, sensitive skin. We talk to the parents uh, and we know how they uh, would like us to, to deal with anything uh, the child might have, like uh, if it is eczema, which type of uh, cream they have or uh, any type of uh, soap they have. Uh, make sure that we provide uh, a better uh, care for the child. There is no allergy reaction. If they have any allergy reaction to any food, we should stop it, uh, not give it to the to the child. And uh, we find out all this information is by talking to the parents. Also, by talking to the parents, we will find out what their preference. So. Uh, some uh, people, uh, some uh, people would like to use certain products uh, for the, their kids, even if they don't have allergy. So we should just follow what they provide us with and uh, use it, like certain uh, soap for their skin, certain uh, uh, products, certain food they might provide. Anything if the they have certain preference, then we follow it. Also for cultural reasons, it's very important to talk to the parents because uh, the, the kids might have certain culture they follow or certain religion they follow. They might not uh, eat certain uh, meals. They might not eat meat. They might not eat uh, a certain type of food. It's all related to the culture and religion, and we find out all this information from the uh, ch child parents, and we follow it. That's why it's very important to start working with them. So now explain uh, the rest and sleeping needs 
for baby age six weeks. So what's the rest and sleeping needs for a baby who's just six years? So this one is a 3.1. Let us go to 3.1. Here. So, what about resting and sleeping? What's the child need? He Is need to rest. Yes. He need to rest and have uh, energy. When okay. work after, yeah. Sorry. And to grow up. When they are very small, they need more rest. When they are grown up, they sleep get more less. Means like okay. baby need more more sleep very compared good. to the toddler. Excellent. So is resting and sleeping, is it the same thing or is it a different thing? Say again, miss. The same thing. Yeah, about resting and sleeping. Is it? Uh, are they different things or are they totally same thing? I think no, so. It's the same thing. thing. Well, you need. I think uh, you need the rest and you need the sleep uh, for you and for the I child. Think, uh, rest, uh, sleeping but is for a long time, but uh, rest is maybe f few minutes or few. Are different things, yeah. Very good. They are different things. Even though the child needs them to rest at all time, the resting and sleeping, but they are a bit different. Why? Because the child, for example, they are playing, uh, playing, playing, playing. They can't keep playing at all uh, the whole day. They need to have rest, sit, yeah. relax, uh, and uh, just get some some energy then they can start playing again. That's yeah. resting. But sleeping, they might not need sleeping at all times, but uh, resting, they always need resting from time to time. While sleeping, the, the babies would sleep more than uh, the, the, the older children. So the rest and sleeping are Rest and sleep are different things. Rest is about times when the body can relax and stay fairly uh, still, uh, but the brain remains active. So your body will be resting, but your brain will be still active and continue concentrating on what's happening around you. While sleeping, on the other hand, allow both body uh, to rest and the brain to recharge. So the the brain would not even uh, keep thinking about what's surrounding and, uh, the, the person. So the, the resting, rest and sleep, they are different. What's the difference between them is the brain activities. When you're resting, your body is uh, stay fairly still, but the brain remains active still continue to concentrate on what's happening while sleeping. On the other hand, uh, allow uh, both uh, the body and the brain to recharge. There, are, there is someone else is joining. That's very good, so here. Okay, so do you understand now what's the difference between resting and sleeping? Yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So sleeping on the other hand, allow both body uh, to rest and the brain to charge. <coughs> it's a pattern of activity. So both of them are pattern of activities. And another key difference is that during sleeping, the body produce uh, hormones that are responsible for a variety of functions especially growth, so that when the child is sleeping, the body is uh, constantly uh, producing hormones for growth. So it is very important for the babies and for children to sleep uh, as well as to rest. Over the past few years, uh, there was concern that some children are not sleeping sufficiently. 
So it is very important to make sure that the children are sleeping uh, from time to time. So the children need for sleep. Here it says, can you identify the diff explain the rest, in, rest and sleep needs of a baby age six to eight weeks? So for, for me, if I was going to answer this question, I would first show the awarding body that I understand the question. First of all, I need to explain what's rest and what's sleep. So the rest is uh, your body is uh, uh, become calmer and still while the brain is still active, can consider everything around us. While when you sleep in, your body and your brain are both uh, charging. So, uh, and also while you are sleeping, you, uh, your, the body will produce hormones for growth. So it's very good for the children. So if I just put this explanation here, it's really good. And then also I'll come and divide it by how about the baby at age six to six weeks? How what they need resting, how much they need sleeping. So if I go to this, uh, to this uh, table, it's, it's really good here. It tells me the sleeping requirement for every child. So for here, it asks me, what about the, the baby age six weeks? So if I go here, uh, one week to four weeks uh, will be between uh, between eight, between six, 75 hours to eight hours. So I will just put it as it is like, like here where it says uh, baby age six weeks, I will put if the baby age was one week, he needs eight hours uh, for the daytime and 8.5 uh, for the nighttime. And if they go up to four weeks, they will need 6.75 hours in the daytime and 8.75 for, for the nighttime. And uh, then if you go a little bit further, if the baby is uh, age seven months and also 15 months, so 15 months, that would be one year. And um, so for, where is it? Now, if we have the child is seven months, so if I go here, yes, yes. Um, yeah. But before it's before seven. sleeping, before sleeping, uh, there is uh, using hygiene practice, and uh, yes. Um, yeah. So there is uh, just one second, please. Yeah, be able to use the hygienic practice to minimize the spread of infections. All of that is a using yeah. hygienic practice and uh, <coughs> covering cuts, clean surface, storage of food, greeting food, washing. So all we don't need to talk about that. We go just to, yeah. This is in a in a reflective. This is in the reflective. We will get back to this because I, I don't want to mix it up. Otherwise, you will not uh, understand the difference. That's the only okay. thing. Okay. So, okay. I need, so I don't mix it up. And when we go to the reflective, we know exactly yeah. what to put. Because I'm is looking okay? here, what is the sleeping? There is before yeah. sleeping, there is a lot of things. <laughs> we didn't talk about it. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all in the reflective account. So okay. when we go back right. to the reflective, we will find them. OK, miss. All right, so now about the sleeping pattern for the children. Mm -hmm. So now we have this uh, timetable where it says uh, it says explain how much uh, resting and sleeping needs for the baby. So for a baby age six weeks, you can have it here like I have here one week, uh, this much of hours, uh, four weeks, uh, this much of hours. So I put it under the six weeks and then when it says uh, seven months, so I have by uh, these months and the, uh, between six to, to nine months, I will have four to 
two hours point seventy five in the daytime and uh, in the night ten hours to uh, to eleven point twenty five. Yeah, so because we don't have the exact age here where it says seven months, so we have between uh, six to nine. So I, I'll say between six to nine, they need four to 2.75 hours in the morning and in the night 10 to 11.25. And then where it says uh, between uh, for toddler age 13 months, so if I go ahead, 13 months, which means uh, just over a year. I have here uh, two point, which is 12 months. It's very close. Uh, 2.5 hours in the morning and uh, 11.5 in the night. Yeah, so uh, these you can find it easily here, but when it says how much rest in the, the child need, let us go to And here where it says children needs for resting, the children needs uh, resting time. Mostly all the day, like they play a lot, so they need lots of resting as well. Most of children naturally do this uh, if the right uh, environment and opportunity are available. So sometimes when you see children uh, play so much, when they are tired, they might sit and rest, but sometimes they, they are they are over energetic, they don't rest, so we have to let them know that they need resting. And uh, how much rest the child needs depends on the individual child, so depends on children, ability, uh, their medical condition, because if they have medical condition they might need more resting than normal children, than someone who doesn't have any medical condition, something like this. So, Children who seem very uh, uh, sagish and uh, like need to rest a lot uh, may actually need more sleep. Some of the, them, they you see them tired at all time. Uh, maybe they have some medical condition. They might need more uh, resting. Some of them, they might not need as much as others. It depends as well on their age. So here we wouldn't be able to identify it by age. We can say that depends in terms of the rest. So here we divide it by the, where it says here, it says explain the rest uh, and sleep needs. So if I come here, I say, what's the difference between the rest and the sleep as a start? And then I start saying uh, for six weeks they would uh, need from this table I have for six weeks I have here one to four weeks so I say between one to four weeks I have this much hours in the night they need uh, sleeping and uh, this much uh, hours in the night to rest from between eight to six seven five and uh, in the night eight point five to eight point seventy five so this is for the sleeping easy because it's in the table however for the uh, for the resting i would say it depends on the child ability as we see here uh, so how much they need sleep and also how much they need uh, resting so for the sleep it all depends on their uh, age the age is showing in the timetable however for the resting we need a uh, different uh, amount of uh, times that child need resting it depends on the child ability the child nature how much they do exercises if they need uh, if they look a bit more tired that day, then we might ask them to do more resting. It depends on the child uh, themselves, not uh, on their age, because uh, 
like uh, some children, they would be very energetic and some of them, they would be less energetic. So the resting is, depends on the energy they have and if they have any medical condition, maybe disabilities, maybe they need a need little bit more resting as well. Is this understood? If you want me to repeat it, we can repeat it again. Is it time for resting, Miss? What? Why is it? Time for rest. For how long you need to rest? For example, that a kid that it's a child, uh, uh, the age, how he need to um, for how long he need to sleep. What about the rest? There is a time, a minute, or? No, there is no specific times. It depends on the child's ability, the child's energy. If okay. uh, they had done lots of uh, activities and lots of, uh, maybe five minutes is good enough. Maybe mm -hmm. you need more if he's got medical condition, if he's got disability. So it's all depending on uh, the child's ability, more than his age. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. While for the sleeping, yeah, it depends on their age. We don't uh, count sleeping for the uh, all the children uh, uh, as much as for the babies. Definitely, the babies would need a lot more sleep well, and, yeah. and rest as well. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Uh, while resting, it depends. Whenever you see the child uh, jumping too much and it's got, uh, you, you think he needs resting, then you ask him to have a rest, sit on the chair, have a, a rest, and also depending on their abilities, uh, their uh, medical condition, their disabilities. It depends on how uh, you feel that. If you feel the child needs resting, then you give them resting. You ask them to have a rest. Because if you think about it, a child who is uh, six weeks, for example, you wouldn't think about their resting. Mm -hmm. You would just take them to, to sleep because uh, they don't do much activities. They are either play with something or eat or so they just wake up sleep wake up sleep eat sleep so while if, if a child let us say um, they are around the three years old they always jump in and play in and this is definitely need rested yeah yes miss. so it depends on how much activities these kids are doing that's all and also depends on abilities, disabilities, uh, medical condition. They might need a lot more resting than uh, other kids. Now explain uh, safety uh, practitions uh, which minimize the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. So do we know what's the uh, infant uh, death syndrome? Do, do we have another name for this? Normally you hear in the news they say cot death because they are uh, like you leave them for five, ten minutes and suddenly you come back and they are they are just dead. So there is sudden sudden death uh, for the infant, which we need to make sure to take care more of the babies, especially. Uh, that's why most of the nursery, they would start between uh, age of two to five, because dealing with babies is a bit uh, tricky. So you need a lot of training before you start taking care of babies and the nursery. So how do you deal with this? Like uh, how to make sure the baby wouldn't get to this, to, uh, wouldn't have this. So it is commonly known as cause. 
I hear mother baby die there sleeping for while uh, the cause of sudden infant death syndrome are not fully understood. So no one knows why this child, these children die uh, while they are sleeping. Uh, there are some steps that parents uh, and early year setting uh, can take to reduce the risk of occurrence. Uh, and what are these? Babies should be put on their back to sleep yeah. uh, with their uh, feet touching the end uh, of the coat. This is called uh, the feet uh, to foot position. So this baby, we should always push position them sleeping on their back. Why? Because sometimes they uh, they throw up. And uh, if they are on the side or uh, not sleeping very well, they might uh, breathe some of this or put, uh, taking it back or this could cause them to die. So we need always make sure that they are sleeping on their back. And also, uh, code duvet uh, should not be used uh, as they can cause uh, the baby uh to overheat so we can't use uh duvet duvet is uh, have you we all have duvets at home almost and duvet make you really really warm and it's not good for babies so we shouldn't use uh duvet normally we have baby cover and we use it we use a blanket <coughs> so blanket should be uh tucked uh at the at the shoulder level and uh, this to avoid uh, the baby's head uh, becoming covered. So make sure when we put the blanket, we put it tacked underneath uh, his shoulder or her shoulder. Why? Because if the baby keep moving, they might cover their head with their blanket and die. Also, babies uh, should be put down to sleep in cool room around uh, 16 to 20 degrees. So not very cold, not very hot. Should be always cool room between 16 to 20 degrees. Babies should not uh, be uh, in a smoky environment uh, or, or held by anyone who has just been smoking. So if you if you normally smoke, you shouldn't be uh, working with the babies. And any environment, the environment should not be smoky, even because normally when you smoke, the the smoking will be all over your clothing. You smell of it. So you shouldn't be holding the babies because they need the oxygen. So it's very important that uh, we we shouldn't uh, hold the babies after smoking. Uh, we need 20 minutes. Uh, to not to touch them for so the, the oxygen level is returning to normal. Your clothes within smell of the smoke and then you come. And hold the baby. Uh, how about, uh, cannot hear you properly. connection is a little bit. We cannot hear you properly. The connection oh. like your voice can be uh, go and come back. So can you hear me now? Yeah, now yes. Okay, excellent. So, for you, I as someone, to ask a question as well. Sure. Which is when you said infant? Which age is it? Zero to six or zero to one year? Yeah, they the babies. You call them infant. Okay, newborn. Yes. And uh, then this and this syndrome is it for like child for one year or less than one year? Less than one year, for, for probably Definitely newborn. Definitely less than yeah. one year, when you put them in a coat. <coughs> Any other questions? For the newborn. Yeah, they are very young babies. 
Mm. Okay. Okay. Now, so for us, how we can pro um, prevent sudden death for for the babies? Uh, sudden death syndrome. To so the it. sudden death. So say again. To prevent it, to not work with it, <laughs> to not take a baby. So can you repeat what you just said? I said to prevent it. Yes. We, we don't need to work with the, with the babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it. <laughs> to be yeah. honest, uh, as a start, I wouldn't uh, think they would put you to work with babies anyway, because this is need extra training. Yeah. So for you, it's better to, as a start, get a job working with two to five years old. Then yeah. uh, if you get more training, then you can deal with younger babies much younger yeah. so how to avoid uh, the sudden death syndrome uh, the sudden death syndrome called code death uh, as well uh, and uh, this is uh, that the it happens when the baby die while sleeping and uh, uh, no one knows the exact reason why they die while they are sleeping so what we should do to avoid this we should put uh, the babies on their back when we put them to sleep and uh, their feet should be touching the end of the coat and also uh, we should uh, not use duvet to cover them because it's really hot uh, for them which is not good and also uh, we use a blanket but we tuck it under uh, their shoulder from each side so to avoid uh, them uh, being covered by the blanket, uh, covering their faces while they move a lot. And also uh, for the babies, uh, the room should temperature should be between 16 to 20 uh, degrees. Shouldn't be too cold or too hot, should be cool room. And also uh, babies should not uh, be in a smoky environment or anyone who's holding the baby shouldn't be smoking. You should wait uh, for at least 20 minutes until the baby, uh, until the, uh, the smoking uh, smell will go from your clothes and uh, the oxygen uh, will return to the normal level, then you can hold the baby and take care of them. Now we need to outline the reason for uh, emulsions. Immunization. Immunizations. <laughs> yes, for immunization. So uh, for us, uh, for uh, for us, we need to have uh, because for us, as I have a good uh, immune system, so we don't uh, we always uh, can fight any germs, any infection. However, we still need vaccination. So. Uh, how about the children? What's the reason we give them the vaccine? Vaccination. So why would why do we need the immunization for the children? Because there are some uh, bacteria or some viruses are really dangerous for them in this age because they didn't develop the immunity yet. And we should like prepare them like to, to defend themselves and their body can react to this viruses and we didn't like to avoid the death. But some children, when there is no vaccine, there is no immunization, a lot of babies die. Because in this age they don't they have full immune, uh, immunity in their bodies, and we should like um like put some like there is the, this special immunization, like for example, in two months, six months. They yeah, depend on the child and it depend, but some people are, yeah, with and other are against. Yeah, but for me, in my case, I'm with because it helps the the child's health first. Yeah. 
Okay, very good. So the reason for the uh, immunization, uh, we need to give uh, the toddler or the babies, they wouldn't have a good immune system until they are, uh, they grow up. So for us, there are so many babies, all toddlers might die before the, they reach a third year of their life. Why? Uh, because of uh, different infections and disease and uh, that's why it's very important to give them uh, to give them vaccination. So other survived uh, illness, but uh, for a long time uh, they might get, uh, get disabilities be because of this. So, so they might avoid dying at the moment, but in the long term they might have disabilities because they didn't get these vaccination. So that's why it is very important to give uh, the children vaccination. Uh, also, do you, can you think about other reason why we give uh, children a uh, vaccination? They will develop the antibodies. That means like when they put immunizations, is the dead, like the virus, and I think they inject is dead, already dead. Then they will prepare them to develop their immune system. They will develop antibodies. And when they, when they were exposed in the real life, to this virus or this infection, their body will start reacting because their body know, knows already uh, the virus. Because when you inject, you inject the dyed one, then the immunity system develops. Then in case when the child is afterward, if, for example, when they went to the nursery or when you mix it especially with other children, they get this disease, but the immunity has already developed because they got the, their immunizations. Excellent, very good. So when we give them the, the vaccination, we develop, uh, they can, their system, their immune system can develop antibodies. And this is to protect the child. So these antibodies uh, means that if the child is later exposed to any disease or any illness, they will fight and fight back. And this is uh, how to, save the, these children uh, healthy. It's very important. Another reason, can you think about another reason? I say what we do now with the coronavirus, like we do because we stayed with, to have the herd immunity, like people can, have affected all of them, then we have the immune system is developing. But in this case, we do the vaccination to prepare this, like to have the herd or to have all the people have this virus and they develop the immunity. When is there, the people are already safe. Or we can say like the child is already safe. Excellent. So uh, even now, and this is this time and age, uh, we are adult and we need, still need vaccination from something like coronavirus. So same reason here, why we give vaccination to the babies because we need to prevent uh, illnesses from spread out in the country. And uh, because of this, lots more kids will uh, or people will die from these illnesses. So to prevent this, we need to give vaccination to the children. So we have, uh, in the UK, we have no longer so many illnesses, which is uh, still uh, like you find it in many uh, poor countries, uh, still you find it there. Why? Because the, uh, in the UK, we give vaccination to the children. It's very important. Now. now, identify the immunization schedule. So, is there any schedule for the uh, for the for the vaccination for the children?
Okay, so for, for us here, they give you exactly a table so you can have some information from. So we have from uh, for two months, uh, we have a five in one vaccine against uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, illnesses uh, and also like you see here three months was the vaccination uh, four months was the vaccination was the doses and you can write either other as a table or you say that uh, for the uh, immunization schedule the national health service provide uh, free vaccination for children as part of the national immunization program uh, it is a, a mark of success that uh, the disease against um, uh, which children are vaccinated are rarely uh, diagnosed in children today. So in the UK, we have killed uh, lots of uh, diseases, which is still uh, all around the country. So for you, um, not around the country, I mean uh, around the world. So for you, you can just do it uh, because here it says what's the schedule for the vaccination just divided by by uh, by the age just like the way they done it yeah. and shall we skip the which vaccine we will have or without uh, giving details about the vaccination so I say again I said, shall we give uh, like the age and as well which vaccine which kind of immunization the child will have or without we don't give this all details sorry i don't understand can you say again i say shall we when we said the schedule in this yeah. case shall we just mention the age or we, we as well like the same in the table and we give the details about which kind of immunization or not yeah yeah i would uh, just put uh between oh. two to three months, just give example for the vaccination. Oh. Three to five oh. months, just an example for vaccination. Uh, oh. Four to four months, what they just give example. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. So now. Uh, now you finished with this? OK, this is the last question. Explain the reason why some children are not uh, immune, immunized. So why we don't give vaccination to some of the children? Can you think about reasons? Maybe allergies or medical condition like obesity. Maybe allergies that go to action to some um, some vaccines. They add some substances, not just vaccine. But this they they will uh, their body they will react. Then it will cause danger more than safety for the child. That's very good. So as a reason, there uh, there are range of reasons. So first of all, medical condition. Most babies and children are able. Uh, to be vaccinated. However, there are some groups of children. They don't they have a pre existing uh, medical condition which prevent them from being vaccinated. Uh, these children, they should be uh, not vaccinated. Uh, and uh, it depends on what like their medical condition, their disability. And also a uh, temporary delay. Some of the parents may advise to temporarily delay the vaccination. If the parent uh, or health professional uh, agree that the child is uh, already unwell, uh, let us say, uh, even for us as, a, as an adult, if I was going to take vaccination from, for example, from COVID, I go there and everyone asks me, have you had COVID in the last uh, three days? So because it's very dangerous if you have 
if the child have the illness and get vaccinated. So what's temporary delay? Some of the parents or the um, professional, health professional, they might agree that the child is already unwell, uh, especially with a fever. Uh, then it is possible to delay this vaccination for uh, not taking it as soon as possible. Because uh, this is very dangerous, uh, could give illness to their child. And also there is parental choice. Some of the people are not convinced that uh, vaccination is uh, good for them or for their kids. So what they do, they prevent uh the kids from having any vaccination so some uh, parents uh, choose main uh, not to have their children vaccinated uh, for a variety of reasons this uh, include uh, concerns about how vaccination uh, vaccinations have been developed using animal and also animals and also uh, some vaccinations are uh, um, are created uh, using eggs. Uh, some some people might not eat eggs, so they don't want uh, to use these vaccinations. And some uh, parents do not believe that the vaccinations are effective and might affect uh, the children, so they don't give the uh, child any vaccination. So there are many reasons. Uh, the, the 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 parents may have may have by choice uh, preventing the child uh, from getting vaccinated. So this is the last question on this sheet. Do you want to, to repeat any of these questions? So when you answer the, the last question, when you answer the last question, it says explain the reason why the children are not uh, immune, immunized. Uh, so what we can say, we say there are many reasons. First of all, uh, some some children, we can give some uh, introduction saying some children may not get the vaccinations uh, they need. Uh, that's for many reasons. First of all, medical reasons that the baby uh, babies are uh, not able to have the vaccination because of their medical condition, then the children, uh, the uh, the parents may uh, may choose not to give them the vaccination, such as if they have epilepsy, for example, or uh, which is not under control or the child is unwell. Uh, with allergy for the vaccination, then we shouldn't give them the vaccination. Also, uh, there is a temporary delay uh, just in case if the child was ill with fever. Uh, so the, his parents and or the uh, health uh, professional might uh, delay the vaccination for this child because otherwise if they take the vaccination it's very dangerous and might give them illness. Uh, illnesses to the children. Also, could be parental choice that some of the uh, parents they don't believe in vaccination, or uh, they think uh, vaccinations are harmful for the body, so that's why they don't allow the children to have it. Or maybe the vaccination they think is uh, made uh, 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 by using animals, uh, by using it on animals, and that would put them off of them having these vaccinations or maybe using eggs. Some people wouldn't have eggs and they think vaccinations are not good, so it depends on their uh, parental choice. So are we are we OK with this uh, sheet? Shall we move to the second one, which is the reflective account? Yes, guys, do you want me to repeat any questions? Uh, any question from the first sheet? Are we all uh, are we all OK? Because everyone is very quiet. 
Yes, all okay. Thank you. No, 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 yeah, we have question. Shall we send it to you? Then? Thank you. Later. Okay, <coughs> yeah, if you have any questions, please just ask me, call me. We explain it together. So now reflective you, account, as we said, when, when we reach this stage, we always have to talk about our own experience. We, rather than me saying when I answer the question, like here, for example, the first one, use hygiene practice in relation to hands wash, washing. So I'm not going to say the practitioner should wash their hands, they should do this, they should do that. I'm going to talk about myself, how I do it. As a, a practitioner in a nursery, I do this, I do that, I, I, I teach this. I Yeah, so it's, it's all about you and your experience. It's very important because people are still uh, sending me some of the work and still talk in the reflective account about uh, about it in general, uh, like saying the practitioner which should have do this, should do that. No, it's all about you. Tell us about your experience. So when you have hand wash, use hygienic practice in relation to hand wash. So I, if I go to 2.1, let us go to 2.1. OK, so here, let us read it first and we I'll explain how I answer the question all about myself. So um, let us start here. So hand washing is uh, seen as was uh, is seen as one of the most important ways of preventing infection from spreading out. So uh, good hand washing will prevent you from becoming ill. There are many uh, situations where you should wash uh, and dry your hands, even if you are uh, in a hurry. So it's very important because you work in with vulnerable uh, kids, so you need to, to take care of uh, your hygiene. Make sure your hands are always clean. So for uh, for more on when children should wash uh, their hands, see. Uh, so th this is for the children, but for us as adults, it says here. Where is it? Let me close this one, so we don't get confused. So now, use hygiene practice in relation to hand wash. So for you as a practitioner, how you would wash your hands. So first of all, you wet your hands with water. Second thing, you apply enough soap to cover all hands uh, surfaces. Number three, uh, rub hands uh, palm by palm. Number five, uh, right uh, palm uh, over uh, back of the left hand with uh, into interact fingers. Uh, they should be if, uh, and uh, vice versa. So, can you see the picture? The one, the way I uh, uh, I wash my hands. So I rub the right palm over uh, the back of the left ha hand so the uh, the fingers are up together and then the other way as well and after that uh, palm to palm with uh, fingers uh, as well uh, in place and then uh, backs uh, or, uh, or finger to opposite uh, opposite thing of the palm uh, with fingers uh, so that you can rub them together and then this it just I what I want you to do I want you to uh, say it to write it down as if you are the person who's doing this so for you you say as a practitioner I need my hands to be 
washed and clean at all times to avoid spreading of infection. So what I do is uh, I wet my hand with the water. Just write it about yourself. I apply uh, uh, enough soap uh, to cover my hands. Then I rub uh, the palms palms to palms, then I rub uh, the right palm over the back of the hand uh, and then the other way, the, the, the left one over the right uh, palm. And then I just put it as if you are doing it yourself. Okay, then you, you rub your, uh, your thumb by using uh, your left hand, uh, your your, uh, your right hand, you you rub your uh, left thumb, and the other way around, you rub uh, your right uh, palm, vice versa, and uh, then uh, then you do the rubbing back, uh, backwards as well. Uh, on the uh, middle of your hands, fingers to the right and left, and then uh, vice versa. So you see here all in pictures, but the way you answer the question, this is I meant not to explain it to you, you meant to do it yourself because it's a reflective account, it's all about yourself, how you do this. So. Here, I'm just explaining it to you so you can go home and and uh, write it all about yourself. So for me as a practitioner, I need to make sure that I wash my hands properly and thoroughly uh, when, when I uh, work with the kids so to avoid any infections. And uh, the way I do it is by, and then you start doing one step at a time. Uh, first of all, I wet my hands with water, then I apply a bit of soap, then I wash, rub my hands palm to palm. Is this understood? So when you write it, please, please, please write it as if you are the one who's doing it. You don't write it in general. You don't say a uh, child care practitioner would do this. No, you write it all about yourself. Just say the way I do it. Why? Just first of all, you say how many times you wash. I say I wash every time I need it. I wash it before serving the food to the kids. I wash it after serving the food. I wash it uh, before I change nappies. I wash it almost every time I need to wash it. And the way I do it is by and then you start explaining. First of all, I wet my hands. Second uh, thing, I put some soap. I rub the palms together. Then I rub uh, the, the right palm over the back uh, or left hand with, the, with vice versa. And just explain the way you do it step by step until you finish and dry your hand. And now when you when you reach this stage where it says food hygiene, what's your action towards food hygiene? So what do you do? For food hygiene, anyone can think about things you can do to uh, make sure the food is hygienic. If the food is I not make hygienic, sure the food is healthy, the food is, uh, uh, is clean. It's very good. Because yeah. why? Because if the food is not a clean and not hygienic uh, way of doing it, what is going to happen? We're going to give the children food poisoning. So it's yeah. very important that we take care of the food hygiene. So how would you do that? So you say, like now, if I want to answer the question, I say I take extreme uh, strict uh, way of 
make sure that the, the food hygiene is um, the food is hygienic at all time. Everything is clean. I always make sure I wash my hands and the area is clean. So first of all, washing hands. As we have already uh, seen, the bacteria viruses uh, can thrive if, if the hands are not clean. So uh, hands are always should be clean. That's why I always make sure I wash it thoroughly before, as soon as I start preparing food for the kids or as soon as I... Uh, so make sure that the food is hygienic. And also, you know that, and uh, like when you prepare food, for example, chicken, you should always uh, uh, make sure that all the area is clean. How, in the nursery, you wouldn't really uh, do food preparation because nursery normally bring the food or bring a, a chef who can be there cooking the food uh, for the children. However, for you, when you serve the food, you need to make sure that your hands are washed thoroughly to avoid any infection or spreading of viruses. And also, uh, if the area where it is food preparation, meat raw, raw meat, uh, or any fish uh, on the cupboards, you need uh, on the on the uh, tables. You need to uh, wash, uh, clean the kitchen before you leave it. It's very important. So if I was going to answer this food hygiene, I would just talk about myself. And also uh, I put uh, on and hair to back. So when you serve food or when you start cooking food for the children, because some of you wouldn't work in a nursery. So if you work from your home as a child minder, it's very important if you prepare food for the kids, you have always to have an apron and also your hair to the back. So why it is important when you cook in to do this? So avoid any hair will fall uh, uh, in the food and also uh, any infection uh, could uh, be spreading if we don't wear apron. Also, can you think about other things you do to keep the food hygienic? Let us say you're working as a, a child minder. What to do to keep your food hygienic? So do you have any cuts in your hands? If you have any cuts or um, any... Um, Well, what would you do if you have cuts in your hands? You know, obviously, you need to wash it, you need to cover it, you need to be put in a plaster or, or maybe yeah, wear gloves. It's very important. Yeah. And also, so you need the surface in the kitchen to be clean at all times. So if you prepare food for the children, make sure you wipe up the table. Uh, clean it. Uh, if you cut any meat or fish, you need to clean it as soon as possible because the, uh, you see, like you have lots of viruses will come uh, on the table if you don't do that as soon as possible. And also for storage of the food, you should always store food according uh, to the manufacturer uh, instruction. So. Yeah, so you should always store the food according to the manufacturer instructions. Uh, so you don't keep, for example, milk, you don't keep it outside. You should always put it in the fridge and so on for any food. You need to read the instructions and do it exactly in the same way. So for food that needs refrigeration uh, or freezing, you should always make sure it's the right temperature and the fridge or the freezer. Most important thing in food is to make sure that food uh, has already been uh, cooked.
So if it is cooked, we should always make sure it is separated from non-cooked food. So we, if we put raw meat in the, in the fr fridge to, to wait until it melts, for example, we should cover it and also we should separate it from the cooked food because it's extremely dangerous if we mix them together. That will give food poisoning to the children. Also, when we reheating the food, what we do, do not reheat the food because uh, that is very dangerous uh, for food, could give the children food poisoning. Make sure you cook it, it's ready, you give it uh, to the child. If it is reheated, then only once. You don't do it all the time. Like you reheat it, keep it in the fridge, and then the child would want more. You reheat it again. That's very dangerous. Obviously, you need to wash the fruit and vegetables. So this is all if you are working from home, if you are, ha if you are uh, a child mind, because if you are working from home as a child mind, then you will be doing all these small things. You will be cooking for the children. You will be changing for the children. You will be playing with the children. You might bring an assistant to help with to help you if you have a lot more children than you can handle. But you need to do this. Make sure you do it. So washing the fruit and vegetables is very important. Uh, as well as that, when you cook uh, meat meat, fish, eggs, you have to to clean them thoroughly and cook them thoroughly. It's very important because you can't uh, give the children half cooked chicken because it's very poisoning. The bacteria uh, live inside the meat, so we need to make sure it's cooked thoroughly. So for us now, if I was going to answer this question where it says, uh, use practice, uh, hygienic practice in relation to food hygiene. How to answer it? I would say as a child uh, practitioner, I need to take care of the uh, food hygiene that we uh, present to the children at all times. Make sure they don't catch food poisoning. And the way I do it, first of all, I uh, wash my hands thoroughly before cooking, uh, before handling the food is very important. If there is any meat or fish uh, around uh, being cooked, uh, I need to wipe up the tables, make sure everything clean after I leave the, the kitchen and while I prepare the food. Also, uh, I need my hair to the back uh, and I wear apron when I take care of the kids and if I prepare food for them uh, as a, uh, a child minder. Just say as a child minder, I need to do this. So I need to wear apron and I put my hair to the back so to avoid any hair to uh, fall in the food while I'm preparing. Also, uh, as a child minder, I cover uh, I cover any cuts in my hands, so if I have any cuts because of I was cutting salads or anything, I need to use a plaster to cover it. Also, I use gloves to make sure uh, it's uh, very clean and hygienic when I prepare food. Also, I need to cl clean the surfaces, very important, so if I cook or cut anything on the table, I make sure I clean it before I start cutting on it and also I clean it after I finish. And especially if it is uh, meat or fish. And also storing the food. When I store uh, food, I make sure that the um, cooked food is uh, stored away from the raw food. It is, it is very dangerous to keep them uh, together in the same spot and also I make sure uh, we have the right temperature for the fridge and freezer uh, to uh, avoid any food poisoning and also uh, for the reheating the food uh, mostly is better uh, I cook the food and straight away give it to the children 
and uh, if I reheat it, then I reheat it once. I don't do it more often because it's not really healthy. The food will uh, lose uh, all the uh, nutrition and also uh, could uh, like help the bacteria to start growing, especially in rice. If you keep heating the rice so many times, it's very dangerous. And also, washing fruit and vegetables so when i uh, when i give the children any fruit or vegetables like carrots or uh, tomatoes or uh, i i clean it properly and cut it and peel it make sure there is no dust uh, or dirt on the uh, on the fruit or vegetables at all times and also when cooking meals uh, i make sure it's cooked thoroughly uh, especially if it is eggs or uh, fish or chicken, otherwise it could give the children food poisoning. So this is how to answer the first part of the question. Now, what about formula feed? Do we know what's formula feed? Any one of you can explain for us what's the formula feed? It's the powder milk that you give to the uh, to the ch children. So the formula feed is the milk given to the babies uh, instead of the breast milk. So straight away after six months, uh, when you when you move them from uh, from a breastfeeding to uh, to formula feed, how would you do it? We, f we follow the manufacturer's instruction. That's very good. That's very important. So you, you don't because it gives you certain ages and certain uh, formula for each one of the for the babies uh, for the age. So you need to follow the manufacturer instructions and also you monitor the, uh, the temperature of the bottle. You make sure it's cleaned properly. Yeah, hygienic. Very good. Any other things you can think of? Wash hands and. Very good. You need to wash and hands. You can't just jump in and start uh, creating bottle. Uh, you need to wash hands before you start. Sterilize the bottles. Very good. Excellent. Any other things? So how would you answer it? Like you've been telling us lots of information, good information about uh, the feed, uh, the powder milk or the formula feed. So how would you do it as a reflective account? So you say as a, um, a practitioner or you say slash child minder, what I do is I make sure when I prepare the milk for the children, I need to follow the uh, manufacturer instructions. Also, I need to make sure uh, that I wash my hands before preparing. And, uh, and also I need to uh, boil the, the water before I create the bottle. Uh, made it, make it ready. It is important that the formula feed is prepared hygienically, so I wash my hands before I start. I also make sure the bottle is clean and uh, sanitized. Uh, and uh, and uh, and also what Check else? Check the temperature of the food, the milk before you give it to the child. Very good. We check the temperature before we give it to the children. That's an excellent point. So to prevent a uh, risk uh, of food poisoning, make sure I make sure I wash my hands uh, before I prepare it. Also make sure uh, the bottle is clean, sanitized. Any other things you might think of? Do, 
would you would you prepare ahead uh, of uh, of the time like in the morning you do so many bottles and put it in the fridge and wait until uh, you need it you wouldn't would you so what we should do we should make it uh, ready on time whenever we need them we start making these uh, bottles for the children and also we make it hygienically yes sorry this is it is not in um, following the manufacturer's uh, instruction because they said uh, you did it in once and after that through it only on the time to the child so say again so what's the manufacturer instructions uh, to to prepare the milk one one you want to give it to the child not before or after absolutely yeah, yeah. so you can't just when you come to the uh, when you start uh, morning in the morning you you do lots of uh, bottles and put it in the fridge because this milk will go uh, bad quickly so you prepare them whenever you need them that's very good and then on this way as well you will keep the bottle warm and otherwise it will be very cold for the baby which is not good Okay, now if we go to the uh, dealing uh, dealing with the spillages safely. So how would you deal with the spillages safely? What is spillages? Do you know? Water or uh, any liquid on the surface or the in the floor. So maybe. Yes. It's yeah. dangerous for uh, kids. That's perfect. So spillages could be anything. You could dispel water, drink, uh, any anything could be on the on the floor. To prevent uh, spillages, what would you do? To prevent the child from. Uh, Like uh, to prevent any spread of germs or the uh, how you handle the spillages basically. First of all, you you remove the children from the area. Let us say you suddenly you are working with water and you spilled okay. lots of it on the floor. Okay, okay. So what would you do? First of all, I take the kids Keep away the from that area. I'm yes. Keep the ch the oh. children away. Yes, very good. And then clean to, the area. to wipe it. Yes, yeah, clean yeah. the area. Yeah. Uh, wash your hands after. Very good. And also you put you A put the clothes. It, yeah. You wear apron so you don't uh, make your clothes dirty. Yeah. You wear your, your apron. You start wiping the floor, cleaning properly. And also, uh, you need disinfectant products. Make sure the area is uh, cleaned properly, and then uh, paper towels to to wipe it up. Okay. And uh, the paper towels uh, to mop it. So you, now you need to dry as well after you you wash it. Put, put these uh, papers uh, in a plastic bag after you finish, once the floor is uh, being particularly cleaned, put some uh, disinfectant to make sure the area is uh, doesn't have any germs. And then uh, put the clothes or uh, paper towel uh, in a plastic bag because your, your, uh, your clothes might be dirty by now. So you need to get changed. Uh, the apron, especially the apron, just put it in a bag and uh, and uh, dry the area because it's very important to dry it. And throw any plastic uh, bag uh, in the waste bin if they are disposable. Normally, the uh, these aprons are disposable, so you get rid of them in a in a waste bin. 
and then uh, remove everything, uh, throw it away, and uh, you finish the cleaning. Make sure your hands are clean thoroughly. So let us go back to answer this question where it says dealing with the spillages. Just say spillages might happen if I was working in a nursery or as a, a child minder. So what I should do. So can you see what I, how the way I'm answering this? I'm answering it as if the question is for me. So it's all about my experience. The way the way I handle the situation is not about anyone else. That's why it's reflective account because you reflect on your own experience. So I'm going to say I'm saying uh, the way I handle uh, the spillages uh, is uh, by make sure I remove all the children from the area. Could these spillages could be water, could be uh, toileting uh, from the potty, could be anything. Any accident happened if the child is sick. So what I should do, I take all these children away from the area, then start cleaning. Uh, first of all, uh, I put on uh, disposable gloves and disposable apron. Uh, and then uh, I uh, start um, cleaning using a disinfectant uh, in the area. Uh, I use uh, some paper towels because I can't throw it away after uh, I finish. I don't need to wash it again, especially if it was toileting uh, spillages. And uh, use the paper towel to mop uh, all the liquid from the floor. Make sure uh, they are dry. Uh, it is a dry area. Then I put it in a plastic bag and. Uh, once the area has been cleaned, I use disinfectant uh, onto a paper towel. So uh, I uh, wipe the floor again to make sure there is no gems on the floor. And then put, if there is any spillages on my clothes, that's very dangerous. You need to uh, get changed, uh, get rid of it and put something else on. Uh, and uh, take all uh, after that. I need to dry the area, make sure the area is dry, and then throw all my gloves, my apron away, and uh, and also make sure I I wash my hands thoroughly. So can you see the way I said it? It's all about me and how I handle that situation. Because here. When it is reflective account, it's all about your skills. The awarding body put the reflective account to check on your skills. How much skills do you have to uh, deal with certain situations? So now safe disposal of waste. So how you handle safe disposal of waste? Can you think about ways to do it? Like, how do you dispose the waste? The waste is, the, is, is any rubbish you have in the in the nursery. How you dispose it? How you get rid of it? So there are different ways uh, that uh, yeah. child minder and nannies handle the waste. So if it is uh, uh, child minder uh, and nannies, they handle it in a different way and also uh, for their setting. Which is the nursery. So for the nursery, there are separate bins, indoors and outdoors. So for these uh, bins, you, you can one uh, you can put the nappies, the soiled paper towels, anything you has been uh, in uh, contact with the blood, uh, face, uh, faces, faces, uh, vomit, the uh, feces. Sorry urine, uh, vomit, 
all these things, they have certain bins for them. They don't mix it with uh, other bins. Like for us at home, let us say I work as a child minder. I would have the normal bins, which is uh, the uh, the one for the cartons, the one for the plastic, the one. While for the nursery, they have yellow bins. These yellow bins, they have all the uh, all the things which they can't mix it with the normal rubbish. Why? Because it's a spread infection. So these ones like nappies, uh, like uh, soiled paper, uh, towels, like uh, feces, blood, urine, vomit. So normally the nursery would have it in a yellow uh, bin. And uh, which is totally separated from the normal waste bin. And they will have their own lid uh, to prevent spreading of the infection. So if you work in a setting, the disposal will be separated into uh, this bin. So for me, I would answer this question. I would say uh, as a child care uh, practitioner who work in a nursery, the way we handle uh, the, uh, the waste is uh, we have separate bin uh, for for different items, and especially I, uh, we have a yellow bin where I put in it uh, all the uh, things which is which I can't mix with the normal uh, with the general waste, such as uh, any nappies, any soiled paper, any uh, blood, feces, vomit, any urine, any uh, clothing which is being. Uh, in contact with uh, with the blood and we want to get rid of it. So all these will be in a different uh, bin, which is the yellow bin. So what what I'm going to say, I'm going to say I use the yellow bin to this to dispose all these items uh, because we have a yellow bin in the nursery, so I use it to uh, dispose all these items and this bin, uh, it has a, a lid to avoid infection, spreading of the infection. So now using correct, yes, now using correct personal protective equipments, that's easy. I think you should take part of this because what's the PPEs. Do we know what the PPEs, the personal protective equipments? Apron, gloves, and uh, very good. Hat. Yes, very good. So uh, apron, uh, we have gloves, we have a face mask, anything could cover our uh, body from, or even uh, they have a face shield sometimes. So under the Health and Safety Act uh, 1974, you have a duty to use uh, them if they are provided. So you don't just go and grab them from your home and start using them. No, if they necessarily provide them, then you should use them at all times. Uh, the two items that are most likely to be used uh, are disposable gloves and disposable aprons. This is like very common. Some other things like face shield or face mask, we start using it now. Now it is common, but uh, normally we don't use these things in a nursery. This should be used every time you change nappy. So every time I change nappy, I go and put my gloves on, put my apron on, and uh, if I con come in contact with the blood as well, I use uh, the PPEs. If there is any, for example, vomit or urine, uh, I, I would handle it from the floor, and then I need to use my gloves and apron. Feces, uh, 
spillages, vomit, uh, you always have to use the PPEs. So if I was going to answer this question, I would say uh, I always make sure in the nursery I use the correct uh, protection equipment, PPEs, which is uh, in the nursery, as long as they provide me with them, I have to use them according to the Health and Safety Act 1994. So I use the apron and the uh, face mask when I uh, do nappy changing, when I wipe the floor because of the spillages, when there is any uh, any uh, blood or any uh, feces or any urine or any uh, any spillages, uh, toilet spillages on the floor, I need to make sure I uh, use it and also after I take them off, I wash my hands thoroughly. It's very important. Now cleaning uh, and sterilizing uh, processes. So what do you do in the term of cleaning and sterilizing? Do we know what's the sterilizing? Disinfect uh, the tools or the, the objects from uh, antibacteria with the specific uh, machines or uh, boiling them or some project, cleaning Very project. Good. Very good. So uh, sterilizing is just putting things in uh, hot water to kill the germs and bacteria, like any equipment you use, bottles, anything, if you put it in hot water, that's sterilizing. And uh, so uh, all settings have uh, to be kept clean. That's why it is one of the requirements to do cleaning and sanitizing, uh, sterilizing. Uh, so cleaning, uh, who does uh, general cleaning? Depends on the setting. So for example, if, if you're working in a large setting, there will be a cleaner, a caretaker who, who cleans the area. If you're working in a very small uh, place, then it's the responsibility for everyone to clean. Whatever there is spillages, everyone will have to take part and clean it. Also, uh, general cleaning is very important, like mopping the, uh, the floor, uh, vacuuming, the carpet. Uh, we need to make sure that the environment is always clean and hygienic for the children. And also the, the, the toilet, the kitchen, always kept uh, very clean and very hygienic. How about sterilization? Sterilization is the process in which uh, bacteria, viruses, and germs are removed from the items. There are several methods of sterilizing and exposing uh, objects to high temperature uh, or soaking them in a chemical mixture. Normally, we use just the hot water when it is uh, coming to uh, children. Uh, uh, sterilizing is usually uh, used uh, for items that babies used for feeding or items that they play with. We always make sure they are clean and hygienic. So for me to answer this question, I would say uh, in terms of cleaning and uh, sterilization, uh, I am in my nursery. I'm very interested uh, in doing cleaning at all times. Uh, so what I do there, uh, because my nursery is a small nursery, so we all have to take part in the cleaning. So whenever there is spillages on the floor, I do the mopping and expectant after I finish. Uh, and also I do uh, cleaning, make sure the, the kitchen area and the toilet are always clean with my colleagues because we are very small nursery. Or you can say I work in a very big nursery where there is a cleaner and caretaker. But for me, I'd rather you saying what you should do if you are in a small nursery. So for me, if I was going to answer, I would say as a, a 
childcare practitioner. I work in a, uh, a small nurse day daycare nursery. And uh, what I do there is um, me and my colleague, we work as one team. We clean the areas at all times, make, make sure the, the floor are mopped and uh, we do hoovering uh, for the carpet. So the children are always safe and secure. Also, if there is any spillages, we, we, we do it as one team. So what I do, I bring mop and try to clean it. Uh, uh, if it is water, but if it is uh, uh, another type of spillages like urine or feces, or I try to use a, a kitchen towel, make sure, uh, put it in a plastic bag, get rid of it, and then clean it again uh, with the disinfectant and then dry it, make sure that there is no germs in the area. And uh, And also for sanitizing, I would put I would put uh, that I do sanitization for all the bottles when I take care of the babies in my nursery. Uh, I always make sure I put them in hot water to kill all the germs, uh, uh, very hot temperature, uh, to kill all the germs and soak them uh, for quite a while until uh, they are clean and hygienic. Then I can use them to feed the, the babies. So it's all about you, about how you do things, yeah? Now, how about supporting children in, person, uh, in, in personal physical care uh, routine in uh, relation to toileting and nappy changing? So how would you support the children? Now, if I go to 5.1, Okay, you see everything is in the book, so I'm not even bringing anything from like from home. Just the book, concentrate on it, read it thoroughly. If you need some research, go to Google and you're done. But please don't copy and paste at all time. You need to create your own material. So now supporting children uh, personal physical care routine. How would you support the children? Where well, it says here, it says when there is toileting or nappy changing. How would you support the children if there is any uh, toileting or nappy changing? Can any one of you uh, tell me ways to support these children? So when you do nappy changing, how you you what would you do? Should we should you just bring the nappy changing and go, or do you do you do you do any interaction with the kid? Well, definitely, we need interaction with the child, like. Yeah, maybe we we'll say for them that it's, that it's time to change your nappy and we encourage them like we we'll give them some sometimes because they move <laughs> then they move around then to make sure to have something to distract them for example any squishy book or any soft toys in their hands or any yeah in the area and to prepare the nappy as well and the cream if you would like to put the cream for the child in case if there is an irritation or I mean, but first of all, like what you said, to prepare the area, put the apron, your gloves, prepare how you will just change the nappy for the child mm -hmm. and get something to distract uh, well, yeah, to dis distract them while you're doing this. And you can tell them that it's time to change, you will feel clean and you will be more comfortable. You talk, you chat, even if they cannot understand you, but you keep talking with them and <laughs> you will do it. Excellent. That's very good. So for yeah. for you as a practitioner, now if if you want to answer it, talk about yourself. How you do it? Just say, me as a practitioner, uh, 
I work in a nursery, the way I support the children uh, while I uh, they do toileting or I do any nappy changing. For example, when I do the nappy changing, uh, I try to encourage the children to make movement while I uh, any dressing and dressing them. Also, uh, I should always uh, not use uh, mobiles. Uh, and also encourage the toddlers to find their uh, clean nappy and bring it to you uh, to change them so you can speak to the children. Uh, shall we change the nappy now? Uh, and then you can ask the child to bring the nappy. That's a very good point, your, your, uh, your uh, colleague, the, the way that she, she would do it. So what you do is just explain how would you do it? How would you encourage the child or support them when you uh, change their nappies? So you need to interact with them. You need to talk to them. You need maybe sing a, a sing a, 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 a nursery Next rhyme day. for them. Talk to the toddlers uh, about uh, clean and dirty and how good to be clean and how good to be dry. So all this is very important. So you need interaction with the with the children while you do uh, nappy changing. So now if I was going to answer the question, I would say while I do the nappy changing in my nursery, I try to encourage the children to make uh, movement while I dress them and undress them. And also uh, I, I try to encourage the toddler or the child uh, by talking to them, maybe they can go and bring me the nappies, uh, the the clean nappies uh, when when I when I need changing uh, uh, them. Also, maybe I can interact with them by talking about uh, what's the difference between clean and dirty. Maybe sing any uh, nursery rhyme is very important. Also, I. Uh, Make sure I interact with them at all times just to uh, make them feel supported. And then when you talk about toilet uh, toileting. Yes, so toileting and nappy changing and when you do toileting for the children, encourage the children to do as much uh, as uh, undressing themselves so the child will have to learn how to undress themselves and uh, give the children uh, privacy, uh, particularly closing the door, encourage them to wash their uh, own hands uh, after they finish and also talk uh, to them about how to wash their hands, how to keep themselves uh, clean and uh, hygienic is very important. So this is how we interact with the, with the children. Now, washing and or bathing time. How would you uh, how would you do for the bathing time? As we said, we normally don't do the bathing time, uh, but we do uh, or, ba or shower time. However, we need to learn how we deal with this situation. Uh, so we encourage the children to dress or undress themselves. Uh, and also help them uh, to do as much washing as possible and encourage the children to dry themselves. This is when we said sometimes you need to uh, change the nappies even for the uh, for the for older kids. So for older kids they don't need nappies but they might have a medical condition or anything then they have to have nappies. So for us, we need to uh, wash them sometimes as well. So rather than us doing all the work, we encourage them to dress and undress themselves. We encourage them to uh, to do as much washing as they can themselves, dry themselves when they finish. It's very important so they get this training. And also uh, uh, we can provide some uh, water toys to keep 
them entertained and happy. So the way if I was going to answer this question, I wouldn't just say it in a way that is general. The way uh, I'm going to express it, uh, talking about myself. So I say when I wash any babies uh, or give them bath time, what I do, uh, I encourage the child to undress themselves. I give them privacy so they can um, they can have as much washing as possible for themselves. Encourage the children to dry themselves after washing, and if they need, I might provide even a, a water toy uh, so they can entertain, get entertained, and be happy while they do it. Now, with skin care and teeth, how would you support the child to do their skin care and teeth? Just say, talk it about yourself at all times. This is the only difficult in the whole thing is talking when you reach the reflective account is you have to talk about yourself. So how would I do it? I would say when I uh, take care of the children's skin, I encourage the, uh, the children to put on sun cream or uh, is, um, skin cream if they have any eczema. I encourage them. I start teaching them how to put this uh, the cream on their skin. Encourage the children to dress to go out to outdoor. Allow the children to choose uh, the order of which they get dressed. So do they? Uh, have to have a uh, sun hat uh, before the shoes or like what's the order to get dressed so they keep their skin safe and healthy they have to have hats shoes so they don't uh, step on something might hurt their skin so how we encourage them we encourage them by talking to the children about the weather about how to keep their skin safe and healthy uh, and how to use the sun cream. So if I was going to uh, answer this question uh, for the skin, I would say uh, as a, uh, a nursery practitioner, I always encourage the children to put sun cream on their skin to make sure it's all protected from the sun. And also, uh, I encourage them to put uh, skin cream if they have any eczema. And uh, also encourage them to put on uh, heavy uh, wear or make sure to dress up correctly to fit with the weather. So uh, to protect their skin. So if they need any, uh, uh, any hat or any shoes, they choose the order how they put it on. And also I need always uh, to talk to them about the weather, about how we can keep our skin safe from the sun, uh, how to, uh, and the link between our clothing and our uh, health. Like we don't get flu if we wear protective clothing and extra thick for winter, for example. And now for the hair, what would you do for the hair? Just say, as a practitioner, I look for ways to help the children at all times about their hair. I wash uh, their hair, uh, maybe give them a brush and brush it in front of the mirror if they if they haven't brushed their hair. Also encourage the children uh, to do as much as they can by themselves. And with the children who have long hair, encourage them to choose a different hairstyle. Maybe say, oh, uh, Harry, what about if you maybe cut your hair? Isn't that would be easier for you? So you don't need to keep brushing your hair every day or, uh, or brushing it every day twice or three times. Maybe brush it only once if, you, if it is short and easy to maintain, easy to wash. Maybe encourage them to have different hairstyle. Also, you wash, uh, you watch uh, their hair from the head lace just in case they have any 
uh, in the hair. And also you can encourage the children uh, to, uh, to check uh, their hair brush uh, to check if they like they have to have one to comb their hair. Do they need a comb? Do they need hair brush? You check with them also take talk to them about uh, how many different uh, hair color style. I can always just give uh, give them an opportunity to learn. So for me, if I was going to answer this, I would say for hair, I always make sure I uh, uh, look after the children's hair. If someone hasn't brushed his ha hair for a while, I maybe I encourage them to give them the brush and they can uh, brush their hair in front of the mirror. Encourage them to be independent, to do it themselves. Also monitor their hair just in case they have head lace and also uh, uh, if they have very long hair, very hard to maintain, maybe encourage them to have different hairstyle. And for the teeth, how we can uh, help the children? Same way, I'm going to talk about myself again. I'm going to say for the teeth, as a practitioner, I always encourage the children uh, to, uh, to put their toothpaste on the toothbrush. So I don't do it for them. I encourage them to do it themselves just to give them uh, to, to boost their self esteem. Also to use the mirror while uh, they are brushing to, so they know if they do it correctly and thoroughly. Uh, also, I allow the child to spend a little time cleaning their own teeth. Uh, I don't rush them, so I give them the time so they can uh, brush their teeth. Now meal times. What would you do for the meal times? How would you take care of the children? So it's about me again. The way I would answer, I would say, as a practitioner who work in the nursery, I always encourage the children uh, to self feeding, whether it's uh, whenever it's possible. If it is not possible, I take care of feeding this uh, kid. If not. Uh, they can uh, I can train them to self feed uh, feeding. Also allow the children to uh, save their own food to provide uh, provided it's nutritious. So for example, I I encourage them to if there is an open buffet, I encourage them to pick the food they want in their uh, plates as long as everything is nutrition uh, nutritious and good for them then i just encourage them to pick the food that is suitable for them and uh, so for this and also encourage the children to choose uh, where they wish to sit when they have their meal where they wish to sit you can just ask the child to uh, to decide where they can sit. It's good to encourage them uh, this way because uh, when I do that, I would build the child confidence. So it's all I. The way I answer the question is all by talking about myself. How would I do it? What's the best for the child if I'd done that? And also now the last one, which is. Resting and or sleeping. So what would you do for the child? For me as a. And again, I'm going to answer it as if I'm writing the coursework myself. I'm going to say as a practitioner uh, who works in the nursery, the way I in, I deal with the resting and sleeping for the children, I encourage all the children to uh, reflect on how they've been. Uh, if they are tired, they need to tell me make them feel uh, that they are grown up. So they need to reflect on how they feel and allow the children to choose uh, the, the stories that I can read for them uh, before uh, on bedtime. Also allow the children uh, enough time to uh, to self settle. So because 
now you work in a nursery, maybe by one o'clock you will put uh, lots of uh, bedding for the children. The children will have to have a nap to have a rest. Then you encourage the, uh, you give the child a time to settle in their bed. Also, they give the child uh, a choice uh, of resting activities, include uh, sharing sto uh, stories with them. So if I was going to answer this again, I would say as a, a practitioner who works in the nursery, I do lots of activities to make sure uh, that I encourage the children to, ref to uh, I ask the children to make sure they reflect on their own experience about how they feel, if they feel tired or not tired. Uh, allow the children to choose uh, their stories that I'm going to read it before bedtime. Also allow the children uh, enough time to settle in their bed and give them the choice to rest between activities. So I don't force the children. I d don't tell them all to rest at the same time. Whenever uh, I just tell the child whenever he feels tired, he should or she should take a rest. But then if they overdo it, I will ask them to have a rest. But normally I just give the child a choice to rest between activities, including uh, sharing stories with them as well, like the way that they rest. So how are we doing so far? This is we done with unit three. As we said, if we want to answer uh, the first sheet, it's all from the book. You just need to write, read it, write it, write it in your own way, or go to Google as well, make some uh, research that would be good. But I don't want you to copy and paste. You write it in your own way. Also, uh, for the reflective account, make sure it's all about you. So when you answer, you say, I done this, I done that. You don't say, the practitioner should do this. This is how you handle the situation. No, I say this is how I handle the situation. It's all about reflecting on your skills. How much skills do you have? You need to tell the awarding body that you have these skills to be able to do this job properly. So, so far, how are we feeling about the subject, guys? Good, thank you. Do you want me to go over anything we spoke about so far? Because we finished unit three. So if you want me to repeat anything, we can go over it and do it again. I'm happy to repeat all the unit now if you want me to. Oh, thank you. Start, please, please start writing more than welcome. Please start uh, working on your coursework today. If you need any help, let me know. I'm always there. I'm on the phone nine to five every day, even in the weekend. Give me a call. We discuss it together. Explain it. Maybe I send you a link and we discuss it together. Thank you so much, guys, for attending. I'm going to stop recording and do this. Yeah.